uh, welcome remarks. This uh, keynote speech is probably going to be uh, superfluous. Mr. Kazumasa Kusaka, Chair and CEO of Japan Economic Forum. Dr. Ruel Briones, President, well, President, uh, well, the, the, uh, the, the speaker of the President of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, former presidents of PIDS, uh, there are several here, Assistant Secretary Maria Helen de la Vega of uh, the D uh, Department of Foreign Affairs, esteemed participants, panelists and guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The Philippine Development Plan 2017 to 2022 states that the Internet of Things envisions a hyper-connected digitally responsive society. The largest impact is expected to be in healthcare, manufacturing, network industries, including banking and financial institutions, and local governments. While, while, while it has great potential to support human, societal, and environmental development, several safeguards need to be put in place to ensure data protection and security. Information and communications technology, or ICT, plays an important role in the everyday lives of people. It is an effective tool for nation building. ICT has the power to foster inclusivity, enable security and efficiency, as well as strengthen connections between individuals communities, and sectors. According to the Department of Information and Communications Technology, the Philippines ranked 71st globally in the 2016 United Nations E-Government Development Index with a 38.8% increase in online service index and 54 0.7% increase in the te Telecommunications Infrastructure Index. To create economic opportunities, the government will facilitate the faster and more strategic rollout of ICT infrastructure in order to meet the growing demand for infrastructures and services, particularly in underserved areas. The 2016 Philippine data from the International Communication Union indicate that 47.8% of respondents use the internet, while the 32% of households have internet access at home. According to the 2016 data of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, the Philippines ranked 89th out of 137 countries worldwide in terms of readiness to support online shopping and other business-to-consumer to, business to electronic commerce. We are confident that we can improve on these figures. In recent discussion on the digital economy of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, massive online, online courses on both website and mobile, mobile platform were introduced to strengthen the framework for the digital economy, to capacitate consumers and improve the digital literacy and empowerment of individuals, particularly in the fields of financial literacy, economic empowerment, education, and health. Moreover, the use of technology to support financial services also known as fintech, is seen to bridge the gap between banks and the, un and the unbanked and underserved markets. The 2017 to 2018 fintech report, Voyager and fintech by PLDT shows that the majority of borrowers with access to fintechs 
digital platforms are actually from the provinces, despite the concentration of, of financial services in Metro Manila. The study simply shows that digital technology has, to, has the great potential in, in transforming the financial landscape in the Philippines, as well as in other countries similarly situated. The growth of the internet and increased uh, mobile penetration raise access to financial institutions, especially those who live in rural areas. One good example is collaboration of fintech with Kamalik Bank in Catanduanes. This is a province southeast of Metro Manila just this year. Digital lending was introduced to teachers and personnel of local government units via online platform called Lender. To date, FinTech and the Kamalik Bank were able to disburse a loan amount of at least 15 million pesos to qualified individuals in several towns of Catanduanes through online transactions, eliminating the need to physically appear in the bank. FinTech revolution reforms the finance world in terms of helping not only the financial and non-financial institutions, but more importantly, customers and the local economy. FinTech services the Philippines to enable traditional banks to bring efficient and affordable financial services to unbanked, to the unbanked and underserved through mobile money, digital lending, regulatory technology, insurance technology, digital payments, micro savings, micro investments, digital remittance, and other mobile based technologies. Meanwhile, digital platforms are also being introduced in the health sector. The Department of Health vision for e-health e strategic and framework plan is to have ICT-enabled Philippine health system by 2020. It will increase access to quality healthcare services as well as real-time and quality health data and information for evidence-based decision-making. To date, the, the accomplishments of this vision are A, the creation of interagency health, e national e-health governance, steering committee and technical working group, B, the creation of various e-health experts and uh, groups and other teams, including advisors from the private sector. C, consultations, coordination, and facilitation of, facilitation of tactical activities. And D, the joint issuance and operations of agreed e-health policies, strategies, plans, guidelines, <coughs> rules, and procedures. In addition, the telehealth and e-health bill has already been drafted and endorsed for inclusion in the list of priority health bills for approval under the 17th Congress. Also worthy of note is the creation of a joint administrative order on the institutionalization of interagency national e-health governance committee of the national e-health system. Despite these accomplishments, we continue to face challenges for the successful implementation of these initiatives. Among others, network connection in remote areas remain poor. Many users remain wary of or intimidated by IT systems. And efforts need to be in place to ensure data security and privacy. That is why we gather here today as partners to discuss possibilities and areas co for cooperation to further improve the Philippines and other similarly situated countries 
as digitally competent societies. Now is the perfect time to foster deeper relationships among each other, considering the closeness of our country's leaders. We assure you that NEDA remains committed to working with you towards realizing our shared goals. Once again, we thank everyone present here today for the expected, anticipated success of this event. Good afternoon again and babuhay tayong lahat. Thank you.